All righty, seems we are all in. So we are ready to start. So hello, yes, it's awesome to see all of you today and thanks for visiting this conference. I'm Vadim and I'll be your host and moderator for this discussion. So let's kick it off. We're here today with two experts passionate about the PWA development and uh, they're ready to share the expertise with all of us. So let me take a moment to introduce them. We have here today Sven. Sven May is a senior web ecosystem consultant at Google. Sven provides technology insights on modern web tech. He's also good at all angles of PWA, AMP, Core Web Vitals, and the privacy sandbox. He has it all covered. Sven knows progressive web applications inside and out, so that's obvious why he's on the discussion. Welcome, Sven. Oh, thank you for having me here. And we also have another speaker joining us today. We have Andrew Lipatsev here. Andrew is strategic partner manager at EMEA, CMS partnership lead at Google. So Andrew is passionate about the open web. He's pretty serious about the partnerships and also occasionally dreaming about Mars. Hey, Andrew, welcome. And I see we share the same passions about PWA and Mars, right? Hey, hey. Well, that's not surprising, right? With all the recent developments, I think uh, PWA, actually, we can talk today about how PWAs are going to take us to Mars. That's a, that's a topic we yep. haven't discussed before. Should probably scrap everything else, just talk about this for the next hour. What does the audience think about it? Is that... <laughs> Good one. No, just kidding. All just right. kidding. We will get back to the business side of things. Yeah. So, yeah, I would like to add a few words about this discussion and the concept. So we call it a psychological session as we will deal with the fears that stop business owners from adopting the PWA technology. Some call it new, some call it raw, too expensive, complicated. We will cover it all. So we talked uh, to a lot of e-commerce business owners and decision makers over the last few years. And uh, each time we face the same fears, misconceptions, myth, I think it's time to get rid of them, bust them. Or maybe we should prove that they are true. Let's see. So uh, let's do it like this. I will raise the each fear and discuss them one by one here. Every concern is a quotation of what we've heard and received from the community. And uh, also, if we have time after each fear is covered, we can also discuss the extra question that comes from the audience here from the live chat. So our guests can post them into the chat and our team will select the one with the most likes. <laughs> so guests, we count on your active collaboration here. Please vote. Andre, Sven, we ready? Okay, let's do this. So we have the fear number one, which is probably the biggest fear, I guess. Maybe not. <laughs> so let's see it on the screen and I will comment. So we've seen big brands and enterprises adopt PWA, but not small and medium businesses. It's because PWA can benefit only in case you have a high number of visitors or what? So let's talk it over. It's a great point to raise. Right, and I think it speaks to the fact that we need to raise awareness more of the level of, of the current level of adoption of PWA. It's way above what people actually suspect. The assumption here that only big brands adopt PWA probably stems from the fact that some of our, I mean, our, I mean, Google's, but not only Google's case studies around this or conference talks, they um, center around some of the bigger recognizable brands, probably for the reason that it's supposed to instill confidence in everyone that big, if big brands are adopting this, then this technology must be working. But the reality is that there are hundreds of thousands of, of PWAs available. And uh, recent data and research confirms this. If you check out, there's a company called mobstat.com, heavily involved in the PWA development, and they have recently conducted a survey of PWAs available on the web. Granted, it's not very qualitative, so we don't know exactly what those PWAs are capable of, but on the surface of it, there are over 600,000 sites meeting PWA criteria. For comparison, PWAs have been in a concept for about five to six years. At around five to six years, the Apple store had several orders of magnitude fewer apps in it, and it was already considered to be quite a successful and well-used technology. So if we think about it from that angle, PWAs outpace in terms of the adoption, anything what the Apple app ecosystem has seen. And I don't have the data for the Android ecosystem, 
but I let me take a wild step in the duck and say that probably outpacing the Android uh, Play Store ecosystem as well in its early years of development. Well, that's pretty obvious. I mean, the trend is all over there and it's for the for a couple of years already. Uh, Sven, perhaps you want to add something? Well, <clears throat> Andre covered it very well already. Maybe one other data point that I can add based on the data that everyone can see in the HTTP Almanac, which is available online for everyone. We have also made an analysis based on traffic coming from Google to the other websites that a significant amount of requests already go to landing pages where this is already a PWA. So that's already that was the latest data from 2020. Watch out the space. There's something new coming this year. Um, but the data showing that was in the magnitude of 10 to 50 percent of all traffic already landing on a page that is seen as a PWA. Right. Well, um, I would say from my standpoint, it's a pretty typical conclusion from lots of merchants because like always big companies, they're first to adopt new tech. So, for example, in this case, Google obviously uh, started using PWA as soon as they launched it. Then came Twitter and then, for example, AliExpress, Lancome, the biggest brands of, of the shopping segment, right? And then others. But if we talk uh, to the clients, we see that more and more companies right now are diving into it. They're scraping the surface and getting interested into the technology. So this can vary, for example, from the bookstores shop to movie uh, store shop or even the restaurant supply businesses, different ones. Uh, and the other good examples I've collected is also the Jumia, the Nigerian marketplace that now spread across, I guess, 15 or 16 countries in Africa. So they launched this Jumia marketplace in order to serve the slow 2G connection, right? So this is another good example of not like a huge business doing PWA development. Or we can mention the OLX, the ads mar uh, marketplace, ad service marketplace, which is also a good example. So this is not something huge that obtains the PWA technology right now. The businesses are doing it. So I would I would say that the answer here is pretty clear. Like a couple of years ago, yes, it was big companies taking part of it, but right now we can say that launching PWA is something that smaller businesses can benefit from. So I guess, I guess this one is pretty clear. So let, let's move to the next one, right? Busted. So, uh, yeah, let's call it busted. Uh, fear number two, <clears throat> the technology seems to be pretty new and raw and the merchants would like to rely on something that's been proven over the years, easy to manage, especially in terms of content management. And of course, obviously bug free. <laughs> so what do you guys say about that? Uh, first of all, is there such a thing as a bug free technology? If there is, please uh, do not show it to anybody. Go straight ahead to the patent office, patent it, and you'll be a very rich person very soon. Maybe, you know, chip, chip us in for giving you this idea. Yeah. But let's split this up. I think all of us have a little bit to contribute here. I think the first point we've touched already when answering the previous one, it's not raw on you. As a concept, it's been around for years. As a concept with a name attached to it, it's been around for at least five, if not longer. Right. And uh, you can look up online the history of where the PWA naming is coming from is available. In a nutshell, the whole idea is that the underlying technologies were already in place. So what the folks who came up with the PWA naming were trying to do is say, well, okay, well, we have push notifications and we have service workers. And what do we call websites that make use of this technology and maybe, you know, use caching for offline availability and so on. And then they, you know, it was a long story short, they landed on this name. In hindsight, they probably could have chosen another name, but that's what we have. It has a logo now and everything. So, uh, you know, that's what we're going to go ahead with. But it's certainly not raw on you. It's not, no more raw on you than the majority of uh, frameworks, for example, that you use for development right now. And then the, the other one on content management, I think, Vadim, you have something to say about the red giving, how much experience you have on, in this. Well, yeah, actually I do because uh, well, that's the thing we are doing at our company, GoMage. So if we talk about speaking easily to manage the content, so I know not even counting the GoMage brand, there are lots of PWA storefronts that already have page builders 
that are built in that uh, with additional page builders supported and they all allow working with both static and dynamic content. So I think that, well, having a flexible page building technology is one of the main criteria for choosing the solution. So uh, what I'm thinking is that business should be flexible enough to build any page, for example, the home page, the product pages, success page, or maybe even the checkout page right within the page builder. They also should be able to create new themes and layouts and be able to customize them, extend them to whatever they need. And also they should be able to add new features and build new extensions easily. And all of this should be done without or with minimum help of development. So luckily there are solutions, like I said, with PW page builders that were designed exactly for non-tech specialists, not for the nerds, but for the marketers for the web, web management teams, for the sales. So uh, in fact, tomorrow we'll be talking about PWA uh, in terms of page building with our product owner, Yuri Pritzuk. He will explain how we developed it in our GoMage PWA storefront on top of Magento Page Builder. So I encourage everyone to tune in for the, the session. It will be a pretty good one. But yes, in overall, there are already PWA solutions that give enough freedom to manage the content without asking the developer every time to dig into the code and to configure something. Like easy drag and drop technologies are already there. They're already working and we can see examples of them online and live. And so, yeah. Sven, maybe you want to add something in terms of <laughs> bugs fixing? <laughs> Um, yes, happy to do so. There's uh, maybe one particular thing I would like to mention. So while there's certainly no software out there on the one complex enough and bug free, there are tools that help developers to find those bugs. Specifically, I would like to call out the Chrome Dev Tools. There are many other tools, but the Chrome Dev Tools really have the integration of service worker debugging to the bottom of the heart. So if you're a developer, I do not want to bore the audience here too much about that, but ask the developers if you're not one. And if you are one, you know where to look for the dev tools. Open then the application tab, gives you debugging for the service worker, will give you debugging for push notification. You can see the manifest file, also try to debug the add to home screen feature. So all the feature set that PWAs offer in general can be debugged quite handy directly from the browser in the Chrome dev tools. And that should be very easy to bugs that are not there anyway. And if they are there, then you can find them very easy and solve them as fast as possible. Yeah, um, pretty good note. And what we learned from this uh, fear is that the technology is certainly not raw. It's not new. It's with us for a couple of years already. And as I keep mentioning, this is not the future anymore. It's <laughs> the future was like a couple of years ago. Today is the reality. So it's not new, it's not raw. It allows you for content management easily without the need of uh, asking the developers every time. And of course, it provides a wide set of tools for debugging and testing. So obviously have all the sets allowing you to perform your development. And as we know, bug-free development is something that probably requires additional discussion because like there is no bug-free development. The bugs are there to be improved and this is the development process, right? So can we call it busted? I guess so. Busted, certainly not right. raw and new. Yeah. yeah. There's a yep. quick question in the in the chat. It's not so much, well, it's it's a request for comment, let's say from Javier. Uh, I, I'm, I'm afraid we'll probably not be able to answer it, but Javier is wondering whether we can comment on why for Firefox dropped PWE support. I don't know the reasons for that specific decision. They've quoted concerns around privacy, but I don't fully understand how that is related. So we have the fear number three. Uh, why should we adopt PWA when our current website is showing good results? Good one. We can make it mobile friendly without moving to PWA. Well, that's a misconception, I guess, but let's talk it over. It's not even so much a misconception. There's a mix of several related ideas in the question, but the links between them could be made differently, I would say. You First of all, the second part of the question, you certainly can make your website mobile friendly without making it PWA. Mobile friendliness is a separate concept. It's to do with 
responsiveness to different form factors, screen sizes, potentially also maybe device capabilities, right? So that's one that's completely aside and you can make it mobile friendly to be clear. And the mobile friendliness as even a more specific concept, for example, in Google search has been around even longer, right? And it has, if you look at Google specifically, it has even well-defined criteria of what makes a site fr mobile friendly or not. That's number one. Then the first part of it is to do with showing good results. Uh, these again, these are not necessarily contradictory situations. First of all, what sort of good results are we talking about here? Your site can be showing good results. In fact, we just talked about the large companies. Most of their sites were showing very, very good results because they're large companies for a reason. The business models are really successful. What a PWA is supposed to bring to you is it's in the name, really. It's not called progressive for nothing. It's supposed to bring you additional capabilities that you previously might not have had. You might not need them. If you don't need them, you don't need them. But there's in most situations that we are familiar with, you would benefit from them, right? So I'll briefly mention the things that we talked about from the very beginning related to what a progressive web app is supposed to deliver. It's meant to be fast. Specifically, you can build a fast website for sure. It doesn't have to be a PW, but using leveraging caching through a service worker speeds it up. So it makes it even faster than what you currently have. It You can make it installable. Can you might choose to think that there's no reason to have your website installable, but let me bring let me bring it right back, right home. We most of us using StreamYard right now. We're on StreamYard.com, which is a website. And uh, in this past year and a half, those of us visiting online conferences on and off have probably been to StreamYard.com before. I see no reason why this application couldn't have been installed on my desktop or, or mobile phone. Right? It would have made it my interaction with the platform easier and more seamless. I can use it like this as well. It's fine. But that would have been an enhancement for me as a user. So installability is just something additional that serves you. Reliability, that goes back to the caching. Maybe video streaming is not an amazing example for that. If we have no uh, internet, then we pretty much can do nothing. But there are lots of applications you can think of, uh, productivity, creativity applications, gaming applications. In fact, anything you can think of as a mobile native app that has some sort of functionality offline, allows you to interact with it somehow offline, it applies directly to web apps as well. Google Docs, without being necessarily installable initially, has been, in that sense, uh, offline available for a long time. You've been able to end Gmail, for example, as well. You're able to interact with your inbox, yeah. read stuff, maybe even write replies while offline, while on the, I don't know, on the plane, on the train, right? And so, again, you can live without that. It's just an extra perk. And finally, engagement through push notifications is just a no-brainer. In fact, it's a no-brainer to such an extent that a lot of people on the web have started abusing it a little bit when the uh, technology first emerged. So it looks like there, there's no need to explain its benefits. It's more probably more critical to talk about why people shouldn't abuse it. So it looks like everything that's in a PWA is essentially enhancing the value of the web project that you build and the service that you provide. You can do without it. And you can certainly be mobile friendly and you can certainly show good results. It's just this allows you to do even better. Uh, Sven, maybe anything to add from your side on this? I mean, you've, you've seen more PWAs than most people have uh, seen websites in their lives. That's probably true. But on the other hand, you have summarized it very well. So just to boil it down to one sentence again, the key is really mobile friendliness and PWA, they are uh, distinct to each other, right? You start with mobile friendliness. This is what you need. This is the core. And on top, you set the PWA with all the features that Andre just mentioned. That's the part, right? You don't have the one or the other. Uh, exactly, you use them um, on top of each other. Yeah, well, pretty much covered. But just to add uh, a good note from Andre's today's post regarding the session is that PWA is something that took all the right pills, right? So we are not talking about something different. We are talking about extending, upgrading, like adding extra features, and the one that Andrew mentioned. By the way, I'm using, for example, YouTube, uh, Google Drive as an application on my desktop because that's easier. I mean, that's just one click. And probably people will use it the same and are using it the same on the mobile phone. So, well, what we can add here is that it doesn't have to do with website being mobile friendly. It's just different, right? So. It encourages the fire, the fast, installable, reliable, and engaging. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, that should 
allow clients for better experience of their customers if we talk about online commerce using the PWAs. So I would I would think this one is uh, pretty well busted. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, the next few we have is, yeah, it's all about the money, right? So what stops us from building a PWA store uh, extra development costs and the longer time to market as opposed to building traditional websites? Yeah, um, well, that's a pretty good question. So I think we should uh, stop and discuss it. Sven, perhaps you would like to take a word. Yes, thank you. So I do think this fear can really be tackled. The idea, Andre mentioned it already, the P and PWA stands for progressive. So you don't have to go all in. And I understand if you think about, oh, uh, there's so much work to build a perfect PWA, that might be scary, especially if you have never ever done that before. But don't be scared, start simple. Coming more from more from a technical angle, ask the developers to just implement the service worker first. Service worker is a piece of JavaScript, which is the foundation of the PWA. Start with that. It could be a no op service worker. Just make sure that all your build pipeline, unit tests work fine with just this piece of code. Should be very simple. Then extend it. Start with caching functionality. Add that as a next step to the service worker. See how that works. Should improve your loading times for returning visitors. You should see improvements very fast with even a little step extra. With that, you're not a fully PWA, but you're starting with that. And if you see, yeah, that turns out, then add the extra features. Add to home screen, push notification, advanced offline mode. The possibilities are endless, but you can do them one after the other, evaluating if they make sense for you. Not every business needs everything, as we already is told here, but you can start very easily. If you are afraid of that, then let me tell you, you can start very fast. It could almost be automated to take an existing web page, turn it into PWA with basic functionality. Well, uh, yeah, I, but Sven, I would like to take this from a different angle as well. So uh, you, you're saying one step at a time, right? Uh, uh, I would like to state here that statistically, like if we talk the, uh, talking about the whole project, so what I know so far, and I can prove these figures, I mean, upon request that uh, the PWA development is statistically no more expensive than the development of a new traditional website. That's com that comes from our experience. And the PWAs are at least three times less expensive if we compare it to website development, plus the development of the two native apps to support both markets, right? So basically that that's it. You, you you got different figures if you talk about the PWA project. And if you apply the concept, like Sven explained, you don't have to fit everything in one box at the same time. You can just start with the MVPs and add features on and on and on. So you can build up the perfect experience of the customers under a proper budget. Yes, if we don't dive into the details, this might be scary. And that's a fear, basically, because that's too much money and too much uncertainty. But if we, for example, break down a little bit, dive into the figures, talk to consultants on the PWAs, we will find out different. So basically what you do is that you invest in the development and support of a single application instead of doing the website and two different apps. So that should be it, I guess. So it's a cost effective. Uh, investment, I would say. So I, I think I think this one requires no further explanation here. We just know it's not that expensive as, as people might think. And the benefits, of course. <laughs> All right, so let's move to the next one. A uh, good one is about the reviews. So we, people claim that we can find lots of reviews on PWA from other store owners. So basically what they're talking about is they want more case studies, they more uh, they want more reviews that are not like, uh, you know, created out of the blue. They are from real people. So Andre, uh, I know you have to say something here. There's probably two parts to the question. I agree with you that people want to see more case studies. This is somehow related to the first one, where it's a little bit of a self-fulfilling uh, I don't know, it's kind of a closed circle here because the more case studies we produce, the more people will feel like it's only those big companies 
that published case studies that are capable of building this technology. So at the risk, and remembering the way I've already busted that myth, but at the risk of propagating it a little bit, I'm pasting a link into our comment section of the web.dev, Google's developer, yeah. uh, web developer website section dedicated to PWA case studies. So A, there you go. Here are some examples with specific numbers and how PWAs have helped those businesses to achieve better results. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, maybe the question is a little bit about the functionality that you have in uh, traditional native stores, even the one, even the sort of functionality you used to have uh, on the web back in the day when you had directories. I don't know if anybody here remembers directories. Yes, kids, there was such a thing. You would go to a specific website, they would list all the websites because there weren't that many websites. And then at some point, somebody cleverly invented a search engine and then the rest was history. However, I guess the one of the elements of those directories is, okay, they're organized. There seems to be some sort of an authority behind them. Other users can come in and leave reviews. And you really don't have that in the model of the web when where if you search for websites, all you get is just the links and maybe the descriptions that the webmaster has produced themselves. So how can you trust that? I would say, number one, even right now, you can check out places like PWA Rocks, and there's plenty of other PWA directories that are trying to strive to provide this kind of review and authority if that's what you're looking for, right? I don't know how popular they are or how popular they will become, given essentially that we just described that there's way too many websites to be put in a directory. Once you start having a million websites in a directory or a million entries, it becomes a little bit unwieldy and it becomes a little bit useless, right? So you, you need to go back to just searching for them, which is what I encourage you to do anyway. Just do what you keep doing when you're trying to discover content and by and large, you will just keep discovering PWAs as well. If you are very keen on having your product and service reviewed by other users through the mechanism of something like the Play Store, I think we, we get to talk about it later today as well. So maybe we'll touch upon that. There is a mechanism to get a website into a Play Store. So there's that option as well. Do um, you have a client story, I think, that we discussed before related to this? Oh, yeah, I do. But first, I wanted to touch also the reviews on PWS in general. So, well, from what I Googled, <laughs> and I can use that word, uh, there are already numerous resources with PWA case studies. they are reviews from real people uh, of the agencies they build the PWA uh, web shops with. And as you mentioned, there are those global directories, global case studies. I think what... Uh, the person looking for reviews should do is they if they find a consultant they should check maybe they have a client that's ready to reference to tell a few words about the experience to, uh, how the project went was it successful or not did they like the pwa as it is right now and in general what's up and how it went right so <clears throat> i think that this is one of the cases well, from my experience, what I can tell is that by communicating to the clients who build websites, built on, for example, our GoMage PWA, uh, well, the, the review is pretty good already and the client is happy because the project was a journey to success and was really exciting. And uh, I know for sure that we always had flexible relationships together. We always discussed requirements and this helped us creating a smooth development and project delivery experience. So. Well, uh, yeah, now the website is launching. Actually, we launched it just a couple of days ago, and we are now polishing it to prepare for the further marketing and sales campaigns. But in overall, the client is happy, and we continue on, and we will bring the best experience for him towards his clientele. So, for example, if you need a review, just ping us out or any other vendor or the agency doing PWA and try check it out. There are real customers then can help you. They can tell you a few words of the experience. So if you lack the experience with finding this over the web, you can just go ahead, check it out with the agencies. So that, yeah, that's that's the thing I wanted to add, uh, add on the reviews. <clears throat> Sorry, reviews. And um, with that being said, um, it all ends up with the way you're looking, right? How you, how you seek for reviews, how you seek for references. Uh, what Andre said is true, and I do agree with that, that if we generate more reviews, if each agency would be generating more and more case studies, eventually 
there will be lots of them available over the web without even like doing lots of searching. But for now, they're already there, they're available. You just need to look for them. <clears throat> so that's going to be it on this subject, right? Let's I'd say so. One. I'd say so. I've left yeah. a couple of links in the comments as well if folks are interested in a place to start. We <coughs> have started, we at Google, I mean, have started mapping a little bit some of the web development agencies. But when you open that site, don't be deceived by the sort of the relative sparseness of it. This project is in its initial stages. We're actually actively inviting people to submit. But it's a question that there is no central authority on the web that will go and uh, this is actually in response to to to, to as I lost it in the comments to Yuri's question. No, to Martin's question about PWA developers, right? Are there enough PWA developers? In my experience, there are plenty. We just really there isn't a place where they all congregate. So Vadim, as you said. When you, if you are as a client looking for somebody to build your PWA, ask for references, look at examples of what they've done. There's definitely folks out there who've done a great job. Yeah, I think being just brave and checking out proactively will help. I mean, and that's even better because you will be talking to a real person. So, yeah, that's the way it is. Uh, all right, that's, let's move to the next one. Uh, the next year says that mobile first indexing and core web vitals update took place this year. Should I adopt PWA to match the new ranking factors or optimizing the, the store on my current CMS will be enough? Yes, but also yeah. don't forget so, that to be uh, number one in Google ranking, you need to participate in all the ceremonies for the upcoming uh, <laughs> Halloween. That is critically important. <laughs> like if you don't buy a pumpkin, like within the next couple of days, I would not bet on having success next year. Google ranking is like that. Um, it's another one of those where people have heard related ideas and maybe because of the lack of information there or because of a, a sort of additional fears, they started conflating them. So it's very important to emphasize. As concepts go, COVID vitals are unrelated to PWAs. One is about one thing, the other is about another thing. There is a space where they're related. We talked about it. PWAs can contribute positively to your performance. Again, they might actually, in some situations, contribute negatively. It depends on what you do. But there is a way in which you can make your PWA perform better. And that will have an impact on your cover vitals. That is about the only link between PWAs and cover vitals that exists. So if the question is, should I adopt a PWA to match the new ranking factors? No, that's not the right reason to do it. You should not adopt the PWA just to match the new ranking factors. You should definitely pay attention to COVID vitals as a ranking factor, but also as a contributing factor to your business success. And separately, you should pay attention to PWAs and incorporate that into your development strategy. Right. I think hopefully that was clear enough. I mean, uh, so maybe a couple more words about the impact on perf so people are clear. Happy to do so. Indeed, service worker is the core of a PWA and a service worker is a piece of JavaScript. Every JavaScript added to the website, if in doubt, it will slow down your website. To put that really upfront, it's impossible to have JavaScript and no impact at all, but the impact should be limited. Service workers are small, usually. Yes, you can shoot yourself in the foot. So a good developer is worth the money. That's for sure, but still the impact should be very, very limited. So on the other hand, what do you get for this additional impact that could slow down the page loading time a little bit for first time visitors? For every returning visitors, it should pay out double or even third times in terms of caching. If you make then use of the service worker, cache static resources, can make runtime caching possible as much as the device and your business allows that to do, then you will see huge improvements in loading times. And you will see those loading times in the field metrics. And those are related then to core web vitals, lab metrics, something that you measure for your own system, field metrics is measured from users, real data. And since this is then becoming a ranking factor there, you should see how that really has a positive impact. But also to be fair, it's not magic fairy dust, right? It's still science behind that. You can improve things. But really, the core idea, as Andre mentioned, the PWA serves a different purpose. Ranking factor, for sure, make your website faster. But PWA is not necessarily related as a ranking factor. Yeah, true. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, from my point, I can only add that 
or even from our experience, no technology by default does the magic. And that's exactly the case with PWA. They won't like turn all your scores overnight into something big. But again, due to the way they were built, due to architecture, they can really help the performance. And that's that's one of the keys to adopting PWA. So I think uh, this one is easily busted because like first, uh, this is not totally re related things, but again, helps in terms of performance. The performance optimization is a constantly ongoing work. We will, we will talk that over later, but for now, let's concentrate on the fact that they can help, but they are not totally related. I'm, I'm right. disappointed Thank that Sven said that they're not mag magic pixel dust. I'm, I'm not sure what to do right now. <laughs> I think I'll have to live with that now. I'm super sorry, but yeah, okay. that's how we Thank nasty you. developers work. We don't have magic for you. Sorry. I, I, I knew there was no Santa oh. Claus, but this this is something else. <laughs> Sven, you should say in action, right? Probably, probably anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But that's so secret. I cannot allow it. I'm not allowed to talk about that. Yeah. And actually, guys, we have this, uh, the next myth, uh, the fear, I would say, <clears throat> also related to core web vitals, that PWA websites, they do not pass the core web vitals. That's a strong statement. Andre, maybe you? Yeah, I'm, I'm collecting my thoughts on this. I think it would be safe to say that websites in general do not, unfortunately, pass core web vitals. And that's a huge area of attention for us across um, all of teams working with the web at Google. And we're pouring a lot of resources into changing the situation across uh, CMS platforms and outside of them. So it would be fair to say yes. By by default, I would say if you pick the random PWA, it is likely that it doesn't pass core vitals just because most websites don't. Uh, then it connects to everything we said previously. It's not because your website is a PWA that is going to magically pass core vitals. You can make it worse, although you know you have to really try. Uh, definitely, if the premise of the question is my website was passing cover vitals and then I built some PWA improvements into it and it stopped passing cover vitals. Again, not impossible that the people, that your service worker was somehow to blame, but unlikely. And I would probably take a look into some other factors before you started blaming the service worker. Right, Sven, I don't know if you want to add something to that. Summarized it very well. This is indeed the point, yeah, the oh, service worker, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, 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 Swan, go ahead, go ahead. I just want to more or less repeat what was already said. The service worker can have an impact. It is impossible to have a zero impact. But if you're talking about milliseconds by just loading the service worker and you are losing one second, for example, on the LCP, eh, no, then maybe something else was wrong and it's worth debugging the tools, dev tools, go for them, they work, uh, to see where that really, where you have lost the second. You will most likely find it and can repair it without having the need to sacrifice the PWA. Right. And yeah, that topic is actually something that bothers, bothers me a lot uh, because we're dealing with optimization from Magenta projects. So I just wanted to add a few facts that the common cases that you guys probably, if you know Magenta, for example, you know the pain when optimizing Magenta for Cobalt Vitals. So those are the like images optimization. This is mostly the issue for any projects. The the ones others are GS merging, GS minification, so working with third party scripts. <laughs> Some somebody has to catch them all, right? So font load optimization, optimizing the critical CSS. Uh, these are all issues that we most likely will deal with with any Magenta project. So what do we have from this? So I just want to repeat that any e-commerce platform, any project in general out there requires optimization for passing the core vitals. Although Google warned us about this update in time. So we had not enough time. And also I would like to add the optimization for the core of vitals is not a one-time action. It's a constant work in progress for the best results. So if you want a good points, you have to invest into this work, unfortunately, and with any technology. But the good point about PWAs is that thanks to low code or no code architecture, the, those PWA solutions are probably can be called one of the best candidates 
for passing the COVID vitals. If we compare, for example, with the traditional web shops and traditional platforms. So yeah, uh, that's the pain point, but again, helps with PWA due to the architecture, due to approaches. But again, we need to remember that this is all something that most web shops will have to deal with in terms of optimizing for COVID vitals. I'm being reminded by our fabulous uh, moderators that we are slowly running out of time. This has really breezed past us. The last link I pasted into the comments, take a look at that, right? Take a look at the Magenta report. The situation with COVID vitals on Magenta has been getting better this year. So, well, hey, but still way off where it's supposed to be. So still lots of room for improvement in there. Not a topic for conversation today, but I'm happy people are thinking about COVID vitals. So keep on working in that direction. Right. Yeah, perfect. This is it, right? This is yeah, the this is from the COVID vitals technology report. It's totally public data open to everybody. You can dive right in and uh, build your own charts there and actually compare this with other platforms and so on. So it's good to see the improvements, but as you can see, 25% is not exactly where we want to be. And uh, well, that's only desktop. Mobile is even worse. So lots of lots of work to do. Yeah, for sure. Well, again, we were notified, but sometimes merchants and I know why they're busy they're not paying enough attention but eventually for the good results the work has to be involved here all right so guys we're yeah we're running out of time but let's try to cover one or two myths while we're still here uh so let's talk about the offline mode uh that's the thing that lots of e-commerce merchants have doubts about so the fear goes we are afraid orders won't be placed offline. Actually, we don't quite understand what can be done under the offline mode and what cannot. Not sure how it works in general. So I know Sven, uh, as a specialist on this part, can explain a bit. Absolutely. So the idea, of course, starting with first, what can you do offline with the offline mode on the web is limited of course if you compare the situation to what native platform specific apps can do right so if you have a business that relies on placing an order a checkout process payment right where you need real-time communication to another service this does not work probably on a platform specific app so this does not work in a pwf line mode that that is reality that's the nature but you can do quite a lot of cool things with a progressive web app if you implement offline mode. So if you start to preload it, pre-caching, all the JavaScript that is needed, all the logic behind that, keep that offline available, then the app could work. You can recreate, for example, your card. Your users can add items to the card even if they are offline. Technology behind that, I will post some links later, cache storage API and the index DB so that the application makes a request, the request gets captured by the service worker, puts into the database, and once the user is back online again, they can replay that so that you can at least replicate the card. I hope that wasn't too fast, but I know we are running out of time. That's why I'm rushing, and I will post some links in the comments section so that at least people can read that who are interested in that. Okay, thank you, Sven. Yeah, just to add a little bit here, uh, guys, if you are not pretty sure on all the offline operations possible, just shoot them in the chat. We'll try to answer all the questions uh, in our feedbacks, all right? So All right. just no to blitz. clarify on any kinds of circumstances. Yeah. We've, been no gift, we've, been gifted, yeah, let's do we've been gifted five additional minutes by the gods of moderation. So let's use them. That well. means a lot. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So the next few goes, we will depend on the new stack, PWA stack, and we'll be dealing with Google, not Magento or any other CMS, for example. Uh, I think I can take on this one. Um, Let's start from uh, from the term that says headless commerce. If anybody here is familiar with that, they know what that means. If not, just to briefly explain. So this is the technology that allows for separating or decoupling the front end from the back end and working on both sides separately without touching each other and disrupting the whole site. So if we talk about the headless e-commerce, that's not over the trend that started just now. It's already taking place. So we have headless, uh, headless commerce approaches everywhere. And they the architecture relies mostly on the APIs that used to deliver the services between the two halves that allows for improving the flexibility and allowing a wide range of, for example, omni-channel scenarios. So what you can do, for example, with the headless commerce, so you can allow for front-end and back-end operations running independently. 
uh, you can update your content layer without upsetting the, for example, the logic of the backend and vice versa. It also allows for, for example, robust customization and personalization of the data that's available across every touch point. So you can let the merchants offer relevant promotions and offers to the customers. You can create personalized, crafted, and meaningful shopping experience. It also actually allows for faster scalability with less resources because front-end developers, they can work more efficiently as they are not tied to anything else. They can just lower your operating costs in there. So, and this way you can accelerate the site updates in less time with the fewer amount of resources. So that's basically what we're talking about in terms of headless e-commerce. And why I'm saying that here is that this is already here and this does not relate to Google specifically because Google just introduced the technology six years ago. And it's not a concept anymore. It's uh, alive, it's used on thousands of websites. But if you wanna adopt the headless, try to consider the points that I just outlined. Maybe this will help. Quickly addressing else? Yeah. Tom's question in the comments. PWAs are not always headless. They just, as Vadim pointed out, they can be headless. It doesn't don't have to be. So I love the next question, right? Yeah. We have time for two more. Let's let's cover them real quick. Yeah, sure. So the next fear is uh, about the Google Play. We won't be able to add a PWA built store to Google Play and the App Store. So Sven, do you think you can cover? Um yes first of all probably starting with that a pwa doesn't have to be published on google play or any other store this is an additional way and i would recommend doing so because it's another data source for you, another traffic source for you and making more money hey that's why we are here so why not make use of it is this more or less for free more or less and the key point is once you have created your progressive web app there are different technologies that you can very easily convert that and upload them for Microsoft, uh, to upload them in the Microsoft Store, I would probably recommend to use the PWA Builder, link later in the comment section, and then follow the instructions there. Super easy, as far as I can say, to publish then your website or more or less automatically in the Store of Microsoft. And for Google, if you use the Play Store, the Google Play Store, I would recommend a tool called Bubble Wrap. Again, link in the comment section later, uh, which is a very cool tool. It allows you to take the website, the existing websites, the PWA, it converts it via the technology called TWA, sounds similar to P, but it's TWA, Trusted Web Activity, into something that you can upload directly as an APK file into the Play Store and from there make it available to your users. So it should be super easy as it can be almost automated done via command line tools. I know that for sure for the Google part, but even the PWA builder is very convenient as far as I can tell. All right. Links already in the comments, and, both for PWA Builder and Bubble Wrap. Awesome. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. And also, you can drive additional traffic, right? If you decide to upload to Play or yeah. App Market, this is an additional source. And as Andrew mentioned, also, it can generate reviews over there. So it can, but it does not definitely mean you should. Let's, let's ask uh, these two final questions. Are we still talking about PWAs as something that's in the future? Like we keep hearing PWA is the future, or maybe the future is already happening now. So what do you guys say? I say, yes, the future is happening now. It sounds ridiculous, but that's in this respect, that's exactly what it is. It's just it's not the future anymore. This is what a few years from now, we will be looking at at sites that are not PWAs, as in they don't have a service worker, they don't have offline, they don't have push notifications. We'll be looking at them in the same way that we might look at HTTP websites, HTTP only websites now, right? Why don't they have the little green lock there? Why are they not on the HTTPS protocol? Like what's wrong with them? So it'll be the same. It'll be possible to find a non-PWA website, but the first assumption will be like, what's wrong with this website? Why is it not offering me that additional capability that I like so much? Yeah. But in general, if you guys were asked why businesses should uh, implement PWAs, like just a couple of notes for the businesses, why? Easier code base. You have probably the, at least the chance to start with one code base for your website and extend that to different channels. So that's easy in development, especially if you start from scratch. I do understand migrating an existing complex multi-year project now into PWA could be a challenge, but if you start from from scratch, it's so easy, it's a no-brainer. Why don't you do it immediately? All your tools support it anyway and do it. 
that's probably my number one reason to do it besides the business aspects. And to be honest, Andrew, you know that part better than me. I'm more the coding guy. And go back to the link that we posted uh, on case studies and uh, we see time and again. And it's kind of obvious that uh, if you provide a better service to your users, they'll like your service and products more and they'll probably consume more of them, right? So it, it does make a whole lot of business sense. And the question is why you should implement PWAs? Because it makes business sense. It brings you results in no matter what your conversions look like. A site that is engaging, fast, available, clearly is better than a site that is not any of those things. Yeah, and obviously the output is way bigger. And now we know that the costs are not that big as one could imagine. So giving it a try step by step, for example, like Swen said, is a good idea. Calculating it overall, consulting with the agency is the good way to go. So, yeah, it's up to the audience to decide. But from our standpoint, uh, I see that lots of myths today were just broken. And they are just misconceptions or missing information. So if you guys feel that anything you want to add in, just put in the comments later in the session. Just send us a note. For example, I'm always available. I think Andre and Swan could also answer some general questions. So let us know, guys. And with that said, thank you so much for this useful session. I think it was a therapy for someone. Lots of insight. Thank you. Guys, thanks everybody. And, uh, thanks for your questions. Yeah, have a Thank nice day much. at the conference. Thank you. Good luck. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Bye.